Hello there. Good morning. My name is Kyle, and I'm the senior pastor of Union Baptist Church in Iva, South Carolina. And I am absolutely thrilled that you have chosen to join us for worship today. Again, the church building is empty, and it's Sunday morning, and that is so, so strange. And we ache, we ache as a body, a family of believers, to be able to gather together in this place again, assemble physically together, and lift high the name of Jesus together corporately. We really ache to do that, but we are grateful that in the meantime, during this pandemic and quarantine and the stay-at-home orders, we have this wonderful blessing to be able to do this online, and do this on cable television as well. And though it's not optimal and it's not the same, we're grateful for it and we're grateful that you've chosen to join us. Now, you may be watching us this morning in your pajamas, stretched out in your lazy boy, watching your smart TV there on YouTube. If that's you, praise God for you. We thank you that you're here. You, you could be sitting at the table right now eating a bowl of Frosted Flakes and drinking a cup of coffee watching us on Facebook there on your cell phone. And if you are watching us on Facebook, do us a favor, by the way, and click that little share button right now. It'll help us get this message out to an even broader audience. Or it could be you're a little later in the week watching us and you're seeing us on WC Tell Cable. Wherever you're watching us from and however you're watching us, we are extraordinarily grateful that you'd choose to watch our worship service and prayerfully just come alongside us as we worship the Lord together. I want you to take your Bibles this morning and I want you to turn with me to the New Testament book of Romans. That's where we'll be in just a few moments. The New Testament book of Romans, Paul's letter to those Roman Christians. Now, as you're finding your place in the scripture, let me tell you where we're going to be today and what we're going to be talking about today. I think it's only fair that we go ahead and get that out of the way. This morning, we're going to be talking about a delicate subject. We're going to be talking about a subject that most people either have, have dealt with personally or, or we know someone who has dealt with it personally or is dealing with it personally right now. We're going to be talking this morning about addiction, about addiction. Now, the moment I used that word, the moment I said we're going to be talking about addiction, there's some of you who are watching, you kind of bristled up a little bit. You kind of perked up a little bit because, again, it's either affected you directly or indirectly because addiction is a huge problem. And it may be that you heard that word addiction and looked around the room a little bit and you say, wait a minute, my kids are here with me. I don't know that they need to be watching this together. Maybe I'll wait till they take a nap or, or, or wait till they go to bed tonight and then we'll watch this message on addiction. I want to ask you to do me this favor. Uh, what we're going to be dealing with this morning, I want to make sure that your children are in the room, especially your teenage children. They, they need to hear what we're going to be dealing with today because they're either dealing with this personally right now, or they will be dealing with this in the very near future. We're looking at addiction this morning. Now, when I said addiction, your mind probably went where most people's mind goes when we say the word addiction. You might have started thinking about substance abuse, uh, which is a terrible, terrible addiction. We praise God that chains could be broken there and have been broken. And if that's something you're dealing with, you let us know here at the church office and we'll do everything in our power to help you uh, to figure out and find out where those chains can be broken. And of course, that's found in Jesus. Um, and that may be what you're thinking about when we said addiction, or it could be uh, the addiction that many struggle with, with our eyes, seeing things that we should not see, whether it's on the computer or magazines or whatever the case is that sears those images in our mind. That's an addiction that, again, is terrible, but, but can you find freedom in that. You can find freedom from that terrible, terrible addiction. But we're not looking at those addictions today. We're, we're looking at addiction this morning that is maybe even more widespread. As prevalent as those things are, this may be probably is more widespread. It's also more most overlooked addiction, probably known to man, but I would argue that it's one of the most crippling addictions that people are faced with today. We're looking this morning at the addiction to approval, the addiction to approval, the addiction of, of hearing the affirmation of men, of women, of boys and girls, our peers. It's, it's the addiction to being a people pleaser. Now, before we jump into our text, I need to make something abundantly clear because I don't want you to leave in this message today and say, well, Pastor Kyle said that we shouldn't care what anybody thinks. That's not what I'm saying at all. That's not what I'm saying at all. In fact, affirmation is part of our hard wiring. It's how we're made. It's part of our DNA. We are created in the image of God, correct? 
in his image, in his likeness. We learn that in the book of Genesis, very first book of the Bible. We are created in the image of God. When Jesus was being baptized by John in the Jordan River, you remember the story. John takes him down into the water. He brings him straightway out of the water. The Holy Spirit descends upon him like a dove, and a voice booms from heaven. And what does that voice say? This is my son in whom I am well pleased. This is my son in whom I affirm. Affirmation is hardwired into our DNA. You're not wrong or bad or, or unfaithful to care what people think. As a matter of fact, if, if you are of that ethos which would say, I, I don't care what anybody thinks of me, you're in a dangerous place. And I say that for this reason. Jesus, there from the mountain, ascended into heaven and took his seat at God's right hand, not leaving us as orphans, but sending his Holy Spirit to indwell every believer. And the Bible says that you and I are his ambassadors here on this earth. We're his representatives here on earth. And if I want to represent heaven well, I must care what people think about me. That's why Jesus told us in the book of Matthew, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of his return. It absolutely matters what people think of us. Please don't take that mindset. It is, it, is, it is not a good witness to not care what people think about us. So we're not talking about that at all. What we're dealing with is being consumed with what others think of me, the affirmation of others, people liking my Instagram posts to make sure they like my pictures, being consumed by those things to the point where it has superseded the, the desire of our hearts to be approved by God, to be pleasing unto God. That's what we're dealing with this morning. We're dealing with approval addiction. Pleasing my parents, pleasing my spouse, pleasing my friends, wanting them to like me. That, that's what we're dealing with. When that, when that takes precedent over how we want God to view us and Him to be pleased with our lives and how we live, that's where there's an approval addiction that could be absolutely crippling. Romans chapter number 12 Verses 1 and 2, two verses, but we find so much power here. So much power here about approval, addiction, and how to break free from it. Listen to this call. Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing unto God, which is your reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind that you may prove what is the good, the acceptable and the perfect will of God. Father, in Jesus name, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it never returns void. We ask, oh God, that you would do a work in your word today. Father, those who know you, who have pled the blood of Jesus, who have called upon the name of the Lord, who have been saved by grace through faith. We pray that you would encourage us in our faith today. You would exhort us to good works, that you would edify the body today. And Father, we pray for that one who may be watching this video on Facebook or YouTube or on cable television who does not know you. We pray today that your Holy Spirit would prick that heart and they would respond by bending their knee to a sovereign God in embracing the gift of salvation that's made available only through a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, this is your word. We ask that you do what you do with it. We confess this morning collectively that Satan is a defeated foe and that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we pray this in his name. Amen and amen. All right, you may be wondering already, am I an approval addict? Am I addicted to approval? Is this sermon for me or so that I can help someone else? Well, addiction has some telltale signs, some markers of addiction. They really point you to a problem. Let me give you some telltale signs or markers of the approval addict. And let's see if, if these resonate with you at all on a personal level. First of all, if your happiness is controlled and depended upon what other people think, you might have a problem with approval addiction. It could be an issue for you. If people would describe you as a doormat, you, you just people easily take advantage of you, 
It very well might be that you have an addiction to approval. If you're a person who avoids making decisions or sharing opinions because you don't want somebody not to like you because of what you have said, it could be that you have an addiction to approval if you are overextended. What that means is you can't say no. You have too many irons in the fire. It is possible, entirely possible, if not probable, that you struggle with an addiction to approval. If it absolutely crushes you to find out that someone doesn't like you, it might be that you have an addiction to approval. If you're on Instagram, listen to me, teenagers. If you're on Instagram and, and you look through and scroll through your feed, if it says, like my recent, like my recent, like my recent, it could be, it could be that you are struggling with an approval addiction. Those are just a few marks of those who struggle with this particular addiction, and it's not a small deal. I want you to listen to what King Solomon, Jesus said, was the wisest man who ever lived. Listen to what King Solomon said about this in Proverbs twenty nine twenty five. Solomon said, It is a dangerous trap to be consumed by what other people think. It is a snare, a dangerous snare, a dangerous trap to be consumed. Again, it should matter to us what other people think if we're believers but is a snare to be consumed by what other people think. Approval addiction is a trap, it's a snare, and in time, it'll kill you. So this morning, I want to talk with you just for a moment about, number one, how approval addiction will kill you, and number two, how you can break free from the addiction to approval. Let's look first at some ways that approval addiction can kill you. Approval addiction will kill you because if you're addicted to the applause of man, to the approval, to the affirmation of man, you are going to miss out on God's purposes for your life. The Bible is very clear. Our Lord Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. No man can serve two masters. I want to make a big statement to you this morning. It is absolutely impossible to be focused upon what God wants for my life and what man wants for my life at the same time. James chapter 1 verse 8, James the half-brother of Jesus said, A double-minded man is unstable. That's James's way of saying he's crazy. An unstable man is, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Here's what I mean. If you are consumed with meeting and exceeding the expectations of your spouse, of your parents, of your friends, if you're consumed with fulfilling their purpose for your life, you'll miss out on God's purpose for your life. Make no mistake, everybody has a purpose for your life. Everybody has a plan for your life. Everybody wants you to know what you should do. And everybody knows, wants you to know who you should marry and when you should get married and how you should act and how you should think and what you should look like and how you should appear, how you should dress, on and on and on. Everybody has an opinion on your future. Everybody has a plan for your life. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4 says this, though. Our purpose is to please God, not people. God also has a plan for your life. I'm talking directly to you, sir, ma'am, young man, young lady. God has a plan for your life, and it's a good plan. It's the best plan. It's a plan not to hurt you, but, but it's the plan to prosper you, to give you a hope, to give you a future. He made you fearfully and wonderfully, and he's got a plan, a wonderful plan for your life. But if you are consumed with fulfilling everybody else's plan for your life, you'll miss out on what God has for you. So if you're addicted to approval, it, it, you may miss. You may miss. You might, you might be right on track with what everybody else wants for you, but you may miss out on what God has for you. That's number one. Number two, if you're addicted to approval in time, it's going to stunt your spiritual growth. Your spiritual growth will be stunted. The professing Christian... The Bible's clear is called to grow. We're called to grow, not to be infants, but to grow to maturity. The Bible uses this language a lot. It talks about going from the milk to the meat, to growing in our faith. But if I'm addicted to approval of others, what I'll end up doing is giving things to people that only belong to God. 
I'll, I'll give people authority that they do not rightfully have in my life. I will give people influence and power that they not rightfully have in my life. I'll give them lordship. That I'll give them the ability to call the shot so that I could maintain their approval. I'll do those things and it will stunt my spiritual growth. Listen to John chapter 5 verse 44. Jesus says, how can you believe which receive honor of one another and seek not the honor that comes from God only? He, he's saying, no wonder you can't grow. No wonder you can't grow. For you gladly accept the approval of each other but don't care about the approval of God. It's very clear, approval addiction will disable your faith and it will stunt your spiritual growth. Let me give you something else that will happen if I am addicted to approval, consumed with what others think and being affirmed by my peers. It'll lead me into sin. It'll lead me into sin. A desire to please others, to fit in, will cause me to do things that I know I shouldn't. A desire to be affirmed by others will cause me to compromise my beliefs, compromise my convictions. I would argue that a very high percentage of our sins do are due just to this, due to approval addiction. And this is not a new thing either, is it? No, sir. No, ma'am. It's been going on for a while. Peter spent three years with our Lord Jesus Christ, saw miracles with his own eyes, watched Jesus walk on water. Yet when the crowd was pressing in and asking some difficult questions, Peter had a desire to fit in. He didn't want to stand out. He denied him three times. Joseph had 11 brothers. One of them, Reuben, he knew better. Jo Reuben knew better. But, but he went along with the crowd. He went along with the brothers because his need for their approval was bigger than the need to do right. Pontius Pilate said of Jesus, I find no fault in this man. But the crowd was chanting. The crowd was loud. Saul was warned by God's man. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 24, Saul said, yes, I have sinned. I have sinned. Saul admitted, I've disobeyed your instructions and the commands of the Lord, for I was afraid of the people and what they might say. Approval addiction will thrust me into sin. You know what else it'll do? If I'm addicted to the approval of man, it'll cause hypocrisy in my life. You see, those who are addicted to approval have to wear different masks for different occasions. It depends on the crowd. They have to wear this mask for this group and this mask for this group so that they could be, be affirmed by these groups, to be embraced, to be accepted by these groups. And, and it's absolutely exhausting to try to figure out which mask to wear. I've been there. I'm not speaking to you as somebody who don't know what's going on here. I've been there before. I, I'm, I'm a recovering addict to approval. Jesus knew. Jesus knew that we would try to wear these masks. Listen to what he says to the Pharisees, the hypocrites. Uh, in Luke chapter 16, verse 15, he says, You are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. In other words, Jesus said to him, You try to make yourselves look better when others are looking, but God knows your heart. But God knows your heart. God, God desires authenticity, not, not being socially accepted. God desires authenticity, not being politically correct. Integrity is greater than popularity. It'll cause you, it'll cause you to be given over to hypocrisy. And let me give you one of the most dangerous things that takes place when we're addicted to the approval of men. It'll silence your testimony. It'll silence your witness. I believe one of the biggest hindrances to sharing the gospel is approval addiction. Jesus had done great miracles. But in John chapter 7, verses 12 and 13, the Bible says no one would say anything publicly for the fear of others. Again, Jesus was just being Jesus, doing Jesus things. In John chapter 12 and in verse 42, it says many believed in him, even among the rulers, but they did not say a word for they loved the praise from men more than they loved the praise of God. Big question. Who in your life right now would hear about Jesus from you if their approval, 
if their affirmation, if them liking you was not an issue. Now, you may have heard all this, so okay, I admit it. I didn't even realize it, but I think I might have some problems with the addiction to approval. I think that may be a thing for me. I, I, I know that it's killing me. I know that it's silencing my witness. I know that it's causing me to exhibit hypocritical behavior. I know that it's leading me into sin, that it's stunting my spiritual growth, that it's leading me to, to miss out on God's purposes for my life. Help! Well, good news and bad, I'll give you the bad first. The bad news, there's really not a 12-step program for approval addiction. But here's the good news. God's Word has answers, and you can be free. Again, our text in the book of Romans, Paul writes to this Roman church, and he writes these words, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, give your lives, your bodies, make them living sacrifices unto the Lord, holy and, and acceptable, pleasing unto God. He tells us in verse number two, don't be conformed that word conform speaks of a mask. It's, it's what it infers, a mask. Don't put on a mask. Don't put in a mask to fit in with this world, this age, but yet instead be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Don't miss this. Don't be conformed. You want, you want to be set free of approval addiction. Verse 2 is where it's at. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. By the renewing of the mind. The key to, to breaking free from approval addiction exists between the ears. You've got to change the way you think. We say here at Union all of the time that our belief determines our behavior. That's why our theology matters. Our doctrine matters. What we believe is always going to determine how we behave. So if you want to change your life, you've got to change your mind. Jesus said, if we knew the truth, the truth will set us free. Let me give you five biblical truths that will transform your mind. Truths that will set you free concerning approval addiction. The first one is this, if you're taking notes, not even God can please everybody. Now, I think that was kind of strange to hear, wasn't it? But it's true. Not even God can please everybody. There are things that God can't do. God cannot break a promise. How grateful are you for that? Amen? God can't break a promise. He, he, his promises are yes and amen. God can't break a promise. God is not a man that he could lie. That's what the Bible teaches us. God can't lie. But God can't please everybody. I'll prove it to you. On January 11th, 2016, there was a game that was played in Glendale, Arizona. It was a football game. And for a lot of people, it was a big deal. While this football game was being played, there were thousands, if not tens of thousands of people in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, watching it on their television, praying that God would please them by saying, Roll Tide, and giving the Alabama Crimson Tide another championship. At the very same time, in the upstate of South Carolina, there were people in their living rooms got their chips and dip, and they're watching a football game, and they're praying, oh, God, would you please give us a Clemson Tiger win? God, would you please just sing Tiger Rag with the band of heaven and give us a Tiger win? You got two different groups of people talking to the same God, asking for something that might please them. Half of those people were disappointed. Why? Not even God can please everybody. Not even God could please everybody. Now, if that's true, let's look at the implications. If that's true, if, if not even God Almighty can please everybody, it would take a fool to think I could do what even God could not. Truth bomb. Now, listen closely. Throughout the life that you live, there are going to be people who disapprove of you. There are going to be people that you will not please, have not pleased, and cannot please. There are going to be people, listen, I know this is hard for some, there are going to be people who just don't like you. There are going to be people who just don't like you. 
I'm going to say something that might sound abrasive. I don't mean it that way. I say it in charity. I say it in love. And I say it in sincerity. You're going to have to just get over that. You want to break free of approval addiction, you're going to have to go to Home Depot, get your ladder, and get over it. Just accept it. As a matter of fact, in some instances, you should wear that as a badge of honor. Jesus himself said, woe to you when all men speak well of you. That means if, if everybody likes me, it probably means I have no convictions. I, I have no things that, that, that I'm doctrinally sound convictions that I hold to. Not even God can please everybody. So who in the world am I to think and you to think that we should be trying? Second big truth that will transform our minds, transform us, change the way we think, change the way we live. You don't need the approval of others in order to be happy. Let me say it again. You don't need the approval of others to be happy. If you think, I will only be truly happy if she likes me, if he agrees to go to Sadie's with me. I'll only be truly happy if they accept me, if they approve of me, if my spouse is okay with me. If that's you, friend, you'll never be happy. In fact, the most popular people in the world, the most popular people in the world are not approved by everybody. They're not. There's a band, country band, called Florida Georgia Line. Now, you may be watching this, and there's some of you watching right now. You say, I love them. I don't. I don't know. A lot of people do. They win awards. I mean, they, they got stuff on the radio. Number one hits left and right. A lot of people like them. They make my ears bleed. I, they do. They make my ears bleed. The most popular people in the world are not approved by everybody. Bill Clinton won an election running against Perot and Buchanan, winning with less than 50% of the vote. Reality. Even the most popular people in the world are not approved by everybody. People are aren't going to approve of you in this life. Some people just won't, and that's okay. You don't need their approval in order to be happy. And the sad truth is there, there are many, maybe even that are watching right now on this video, on this sermon. You're viewing this, and you have spent your entire life trying to please an unpleasable person. You've spent your existence bent on proving them wrong, earning their approval, and you never got it. I want you to know that I am sorry for the pain that that has caused. It could have been a parent, could have been a coach, could have been a teacher, could have been a spouse. I'm sorry for the pain that that's caused. And again, I know this sounds abrasive, but hear my heart on it. You are in a self-inflicted prison. Your happiness does not have to be dependent upon their approval of you. You've put yourself in that prison. By the way, you haven't got it yet. The chances are you're never going to get their approval. Listen, if you're looking at any human being to meet all of your needs or to keep you happy, you're going to have a life full of disappointment. Instead, I'd tell you to do this. I'd exhort you to do this. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Seek first the approval of man, the affirmation of friends or a spouse or a parent. No, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. The righteousness of God is Christ. Seek Christ and then all of these things will be added unto you. When pleasing God is a priority, you'll be set free from approval addiction. Let me give you one more thing and we'll be done this morning. Third truth bomb that will transform my mind and set me free from approval addiction. Here it is. Ultimately, you only have one person to please. Ultimately, you and I as believers only have one person to please. Anything outside of that is really idolatry. Idolatry is anything that we put before God. The first two commandments that we have, don't have any gods before me and don't make idols. People pleasers, approval addicts have allowed opinions to become idols. They've made affirmation God. Listen to what Paul says in Galatians chapter 1 verse number 10. Am I trying to please God or to please people? If I were still worried about pleasing people, I wouldn't be a servant to God. Friend, 
Ultimately, you only have one person to please. And I'm of the belief that if you get that right, everything else will line up. It really does. It really does. Listen, it may be that you've heard this message today and say, well, preach. Truth is, I, I do believe I may have a, an addiction to approval. I do give too much credence to what people think about me. I'm consumed by it. I, I, I check my social media statuses, and, and, and my, my happiness is up and down, depending on how many likes or, or comments I've got. And I want to tell you, you're not alone on that. I struggle with it, too. One of the hardest things in the world to do is to preach a sermon and put it online because you know it's going to be chewed up by a lot of people. And a lot of people are going to spit it out. You're going to hear from uh, people who are blessed by it. And you're going to hear from, you got this wrong, this wrong. A lot of critical stuff out there, too. It's hard to do. It's difficult to do. And, and, and one of the things that I've struggled with, and I've had to ask the Lord for help on this, Lord, uh, help me to just do this in a manner that would please you and let the chips fall where they may. I want to encourage you to take that same attitude in life. Focus your heart. Determine in your spirit to be a person who lives a life, a holy sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. Be transformed in your thoughts, not conformed to this world, but transformed in your thoughts. And, and focus yourself on pleasing Him and then letting the chips fall where they may. Listen, it could be that you're watching this video and you'll say, well, I, I do want to please God, but there's some things in my life. I, I'm not sure that I even know him as my Savior. Well, the Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, those who are in Christ, those who are saved, have been justified by faith. Justified, made right with God through faith in Jesus Christ. And now we have peace with God through Jesus you can be approved by God, not by your works, not by your, your appearance, not by what you do or the sermons that you preach. We're approved by God in Christ. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, to cleanse you of all unrighteousness, you've never asked Him to save you, become the Lord of your life, you can do that today. And you'll be forever approved by God. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 says, For those who are in Christ, there's no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus, would you pray and ask God to save you, to forgive you? Would you repent, turn from your sins and turn to him, asking him to give you a new heart, to give you a new life? Well, if you'll do that, you'll be a new creation. The Bible says every person, every person who confesses with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believes in their heart that God raised him from the dead shall be saved. If you've prayed that prayer and asked God to save you today, would you let us know so that we could worship with you? There are a couple of ways that you could let us know. You, you can text us. You can text at UBC Save to 81010, and we'll get back to you. Or you can go to unionbaptistiva.com, and there's a little button that says Decision. You can click that Decision button, fill out a form, and we would love that because it helps us celebrate the decision that you've made to trust Christ and also to follow up with you on your next steps. Well, listen, I have enjoyed our time together in the Word today. I pray that you've taken this Word, that you'll hide it in your heart, that you might not sin against God. Memorize Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 this week. Let's pray, and we will be done for the day. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that the only one we really need approval of is you. Help us, God, as Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 tell us to live our lives as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing unto God. This is our reasonable service. Help us, God, not to be conformed to this world, not to put on mask after mask after mask to be affirmed or to fit in, but instead be transformed by truth, by the renewing of our minds. Father, thank you that though the messenger is flawed and he is weak, the message, the word, the gospel, your truth, Father, is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, thank you for it today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you real soon.